Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Xi Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louisa Li. And today we are going to talk about sex education. education. Yes. <laughs> a very sensitive topic. A classic question. Uh, did you ask your parents the question when you were little? Um, Where did I come from? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. My mother said I came out of a womb. So that was quite a That was honest, straightforward. That was very and the correct answer. one. But, but I know here in China, parents have kind of like a standard answer. Mm. What did your parents say? Picked up somewhere from the gar garbage. Garbage? I, I mean, did know. that hurt your yeah. feeling a little bit? No, when you were little, no feelings at all. <laughs> <laughs> not right. sensitive at all. But today we're going to talk about sex education. We're now joined in the studio by three ladies. <laughs> so we have Tao. Tao. We have Tao here. Uh, you're a mother to... Two children. How old are they? Uh, my oldest is five. And uh, I have a youngest, there's a two and a half. All right. Yeah, a yeah. girl and a boy. You need mm. that lesson, huh? Sex mm. education. Yes. And Stella, you're a mother to? A son. A son. Mm. 12 years old. So you passed that stage already? Mm, yeah. I sort of. <laughs> <laughs> there is a story, there is a story. Yeah. And uh, Hong Yan. Yes, I have a 40-year-old daughter okay. and a four-year-old son. So you are mm. experiencing all these different stages of <laughs> right. sex education, <laughs> and at the same time you have another job. You, you yes, you work I work for, the for UNESCO, UNESCO uh, Beijing office as okay. a national program officer, and my main job is promoting comprehensive sexuality education. So right. wait, uh, the word you used, <laughs> yeah. we say it's sex education, but you said sexuality education. Yes, and comprehensive sexuality education, we call it in short form CSE. How That's different are they, the two terms? Well, sex is biological. You were talking about in biological mm -hmm. sense, but when we see sexuality, it's more comprehensive. Okay. Yeah. Are you talking about more gender-based when you talk about sexuality? Sexuality has uh, mm -hmm. both biological uh, aspects. It also has these emotional and social aspects. Right. Yes. Yeah, so gender is a very important element. It covers kind of like a broad range. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So back to the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, where did I come from? Did you get that question? Of course, yeah. Um, both my kids, they asked this question when they were about, for my daughter was about four, five years old yeah. in the kindergarten. And my son, when he was three or three and a half. But before that, he already watched a documentary program about animals mm -hmm. on TV. Ah. And at one point, uh, when there was a scene to uh, a tiger's uh, mating, uh, he asked the question, what are they doing? I think I gave the answer, I said they are mating and then they are going to have baby tigers. And then we ask the question, where does the baby come from? I always try to say that a little bit of your mom and a little bit of your dad, dad and, you know, meeting together. And he said, mating. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he connects so the still, dots. Yeah? Exactly, yeah. Mm. So he connects the dots. So you don't know when and how children actually capture that information. Same question from your daughter too? Daughter was when she asked was about four around four or five, okay. and uh, she didn't have that <coughs> knowledge uh, about mating. So I give an analogy, I said, you know, you know the slides, you like sliding, uh -huh. and so when you came out of your mom's <laughs> body, just like you take a slide. Mm -hmm. After some time, then I start to talk about eggs and sperm. You know, so um, <laughs> let's say um, Hong Yan did it in the yeah. um, um, academic way, yeah. the proper way being promoted by maybe UNESCO, but because if that's mm -hmm. exactly what you do, right? You, you're exactly. trying to yeah. encourage people to do it, answer questions in this way. Mm. We know there is a story between you and your mm -hmm. son. We'll come back to you, but Tao? I think um, my daughter is actually teaching my son at the moment. Wait. Um, <laughs> your daughter is teaching your son Yeah, about it? because I have told my daughter that she was in my tummy. It was a, a painful process because it was a painful process. <laughs> and then she got out, and then she and then she's like, uh, I didn't hurt you that much. I was like, No, not much, not as much as uh, Adam hurt me. <laughs> and then, and now sometimes she will say to Adam, uh, the, the the brother, and say, I was there first, and <laughs> you're there later, and you hurt mommy more. <laughs> and then, yeah. So, but how did this start the conversation? Like, uh, you know, when, the, when we're playing games, and uh, sometimes they will ask you, where, you know, when, where, where babies come from. And um, my five years old, she loves playing those door games, and she has this little corner. She just do a lot of independent play. Mm -hmm. You will see she put two doors together, and then have a hug, and then say, oh, baby is born. And then she will be like, oh, we need to feed the baby. And she will actually take the baby, put on the breast, and give her feed. But a lot of the time, I was surprised the information she has, or you know, she gathered. Uh, I'm certain mm. we didn't give her, or we didn't deliberately teach her that. 
<laughs> yeah. Know. You never know how knowledgeable they they yeah. can be these days. I, right? I, I guess also with storybook, you kind of know that the mother will get pregnant and then you have a baby, but you don't know the exact process. When I, when I was growing up, I didn't know the exact process. But where did you get your basic knowledge? I, I think from, from my parents and yeah. also from storybooks. From your parents yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Storybooks. Well. Yeah. And like you said, from animal documentaries. I think mm -hmm. you, you kind of, you kind of you know, connect the dots them. and you think it's probably similar. It would be interesting to ask yeah. Stella to share her <laughs> yeah. story with her son. Mm -hmm. Tell us the story. Mm, you know, never uh, I was asked this question. And then so I asked him finally, uh, why, why don't you ask me this question? And he said, I don't ask silly questions. <laughs> silly questions. <laughs> yeah, silly questions. I said, why? And he said, like, um, I know the answers. I know. Why should I ask you? He, he just said, I, I read books I can read. And then he just, you know, coldly showed me a book. Yeah, this is the book he actually, uh -huh. he, he says, yeah, books mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, yeah. you read a it lot yourself. Of books. You just <laughs> read it, yeah. Then I opened this book and I found a lot of details actually, you know, with all the details, yeah, you see, you know, very clear with all the information. It's pretty detailed for Yeah, for very kid, detailed. That's a, um, the Chinese version of a yeah. textbook yeah, in America. Yeah, actually, this is a textbook from But yeah. for yeah. Junior, yeah. Uh, by junior high schools. Yeah, students. junior high, oh, by junior high. I think yeah. he read these books uh, in primary school. Wow. Since this is a classic question, it won't be just us right. asking this question when we were little. You know, we had a street interview, see what kind of answers they got. Let's take, take a, a look. look. Is this is from the 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 你以后会懂得那爸爸就骗他说Oh, surprised by the answers? I mean, I find these um, answers quite humorous, and mm. to be honest, they all they all quite similar. So we all share the same <laughs> wisdom. Huh? All the parents <laughs> share the same wisdom. I just wonder whether um, foreign parents would give the same answer. I don't think so. I think this is a very, like you said, it's a very classic question. It's always a very classic answer here in China. But how you you married to a foreign husband? He's yes. from uh, well, from UK. From the UK. Yeah. Uh, did he give an answer to the similar question to you? Uh, well, we have a more, you know, special case because my husband is a doctor. Okay. <laughs> so, <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you know, when they ask, and he would tell, you know, your mom is trying to give you bus and they're trying to push you out, but you're too big. So we can get you out. So mommy have to have a doctor to cut her open, which is very, very painful. So you always <laughs> need to thank your mother for that. Which, yeah. you know, kind of like, uh, yeah, it's quite serious <laughs> and uh, unusual answer. Yeah, well, yeah. another academic version yeah. that I was saying. Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of a surprise though by the answers. Is one, it's almost like we share, well, a few same answers to this, that question either picked up somewhere, you know. From the garbage can. Yeah, no, the only <laughs> difference is the location is different. Right? <laughs> or it's yeah. like given as a complimentary gift yeah. when you try to what, I mean, make a down payment for your mobile phone. It's but almost like the parents are trying to, you know, not answer the question. So they're just... Trying to avoid it. Yeah, they're yeah. just randomly throw an answer. So oh, that's you, a I very picked you up from the street or yeah. I found you. That's yeah. a very good point. But the, some young parents, they've decided, no, we're going to have some sex education to my right. kids as early as possible. Because these days, you don't know how much they know. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the question is, do you th still think that sex education is necessary? Oh, of course. <laughs> no doubt to that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yes. 
Oh, I'm surprised by your answer, though, Stella. <laughs> Not necessarily, you know, uh, get information by the parents. Okay. Mm. The kids can learn, can get knowledge from, so from, yeah, from books, reading, from you know. internet. What you're saying is education or, or, or grabbing the information mm. is important. Mm. But you don't think it is necessary that it should be done in the school? Or, or by a parent. By, by, by the parents in, the, mm. in a formal talk like you know, what your husband would do mm. or what you would do to your kids. That no systematic education or mm -hmm. sex education mm -hmm. is necessary since information is everywhere. Yeah, that's what I think. Just in Stella's right. case, I think what you're talking about is uh, he gathering the knowledge Mm. about, you know, the biological kind of yeah. body part and mm. how to have mm -hmm. sex and all that. I don't think it's just that's all about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the sex education. It's not just about you know how to do it and what it's about. Mm. It's, uh, you know, why you want to do it and the responsibility afterwards. Mm. And uh, this is, you know, that's a more emotion side, mm. which uh, you never be able to read a book and understand it. It's more like the sexuality education, yeah, yeah. like yeah. you yeah. mentioned. It's yeah. more comprehensive. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you concentrate on the part which is more sensitive, say, sex education, you know, the body mm. and the relationship between men and women and how children were born and things like that. Do you think it is necessary to have them in the curriculum to be educated by school or by parents? I think both. Like, school should give them, you know, education and the parents should be able <coughs> to communicate with the child mm. and uh, guide them when necessary. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think both parents and uh, schools play very important roles. Oh. Um, and I think parents are in a, in a very unique position. They have abundant opportunities to provide the appropriate education to kids uh, as they grow up. Um, but schools play a central role uh, in a modern society. And also the setup in the schools, you know, it's easier for uh, children to get age-appropriate uh, education. For example, um, Stella's son, mm -hmm. uh, he seems to be very advanced um, in terms of his cognitive ability because he read the book mm -hmm. written for junior high uh, school students when he was a primary student. Yeah? We have kids like that, so mm -hmm. we should respect their developmental level. So there are different uh, level of uh, contents and different approach needs to be taken. And schools are in a good position to do that. And mm -hmm. the parents, of course, they have the opportunities, but mm. then they need a lot of support, especially when they were young, they were not educated mm. sufficiently. <laughs> right. So, but Again, we're mm. talking about this in the Chinese co uh, context. The right. environment is kind of, a, in the culturally speaking, more um, conservative. conservative in yeah. a way. Because mm. yeah. uh, in primary school, we have the subject that's, I don't know, maybe some basic knowledge about your body. But, mm. you know, it was included mm. in the curriculum. Yeah. But normally it was like, the teacher would say, okay, take your own time to Rate do yourself, yourself. self-study. <laughs> yeah, and I, I had that. Mm. I had that. Huh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, so that's that's what, what is happening now these days yeah. in China. Maybe I not anymore in these days in China. Yeah, and I do remember in my university, probably this is a unique experience. I had a roommate. Um, that one day we were just surprised to find that she has, uh, she looks slim. And uh, once she take off her clothes, she had this uh, very tight wrapped over her breast area because she feel ashamed because when she was in middle school uh, boys uh -huh. were laughing at her because she was uh, you know mature mm. earlier than her oh, peers right, and right. she feel mm. oh, so ashamed so she's wrapping herself very tight mm. and in western culture you know that's something if a girl has a you know wear a health body and wear a beautiful body mm. and the boys will go wow and in china boys will go like, uh, look at her. Laughing. Wow, meaning mm. different things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, different culture. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, mm. For a kids to learn, scientific knowledge is, is a foundation. You know, they need to understand their body, how the body system works, the mm. reproduction uh, process, the reproductive organs and all that. But that's not enough. Mm. And they need to, uh, through knowing their body, then they... Uh, appreciate their own body and they feel proud of their body and they have a control over their body. That's the relationship with yourself. Mm. So it's an interpersonal relationship, we can call it. And that's the most important part. But then there's also more to it. There's interpersonal relationship. Mm. You know, how you deal with anyone, 
in your life, you know, family members or your peers, and you know, someone who is, uh, you know, has more authority over you. Um, and, uh, and also intimate relationships, mm -hmm. so sexual relationships. So the relationships basically accompany you throughout your whole, mm -hmm. your life uh, cycle. And, and there's a sexuality aspect to it. Mm -hmm. And so it's very... Um, complicated. Yeah, it's That's complicated. That's why we need UNESCO <laughs> for it. <I'm laughs> but the thing is, you never know how much kids know about sex. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the perception would be now they're, <laughs> they're too young, they're kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's take a look at the video, and you will find out how much they know about sex. Okay. 我叫胡家威，是一名儿童性教育的老师。二零一三年的时候呢，我和我的小伙伴创建了一家专门做儿童性教育的社会企业。我们主要是通过在线教育的方式，为全国各地的家长和孩子。提供我们的儿童性教育的课程。我们在给小学和初中的孩子上性教育课之前呢，我们会有一个环节叫做“性的头脑风暴”。我们会在黑板上写一个非常大的一个“性”字，然后让同学们去联想，任何你想到的词都可以。啊，我记得有一次呢，我被一个家长邀请去他孩子所在的六年级的班级里面去上性教育课。那课前呢，这个家长就叮嘱我说：“哎呀，我们家的孩子特别单纯，什么都不懂。”非常需要性教育，你一定要好好的给他进行性教育。结果呢，没有想到，当我们进行性的头脑风暴这个环节，他的孩子，包括他们班里的孩子，联想到的却是啪啪啪，然后做爱、搞基、gay、A 片、色情啊、充、呃、气娃娃等等。当时我再去看那个家长的表情的时候，就发现他整个人都非常的懵了。所以说呢，就是很多家长对于孩子总会觉得说，好像孩子什么都不懂，什么都不知道。但是其实现在孩子他所接触到的信息信息是远远高于我们的对他的一个认识。So from basically what he's saying, kids actually know more than we think they know. Yeah. Uh, and now parents. Get worried <laughs> these days. <laughs> they get a lot of information from the internet, internet, but the thing is, all these information is not controlled. Right. Yeah. So you, they have access to all the information. Some of them might not be appropriate to. Mm. Yeah. Might might be misleading even. Yeah. So were you were you surprised at all by the fact? No, no. I yeah. Like right now, even my five years old knows my passcode to our iPad. Maybe, maybe still like we're looking for cartoons, but I believe soon enough to find other things to watch. As a professional working in this area, I, I do, uh, um, I do have a lot of concerns about uh, these competing uh, sources of information, which are not controlled very well all the time, uh, so, um, like pornography, uh, or cyber bullying, uh, cyber sex, and texting. All those things are part of uh, young people's life now. Um, Kids need to be taught on how to look at the med information on the media mm. and how to distinguish, uh, how to analytically look at them, mm. uh, so they do not buy into everything presented in the media. So that's the first question: uh, Is it necessary? It's almost like you know we're reaching a consensus. Yes, yes. definitely necessary. <laughs> Next questions would be, when? Yeah, mm. when? Okay. How? How? Mm. By whom? Mm. Where? <laughs> All these questions will follow, so let's take a break and we'll come back to that discussion. Stay with us. More talk will continue. I have a friend who is very interested in the education of children. When his daughter was about five or six years old, one day, his daughter saw the toilet in the bathroom, in the garbage bin. His daughter was very curious. So she asked her mother, "Mother, what is this? Why is there blood on the toilet?" His mother heard the question and replied, "It is very natural to her to say that the blood is on the toilet. It is the toilet bowl. It may be blood, but it is not blood. It means that the mother is not sick. It is showing that the mother is healthy and healthy." 等你长大以后呢，你也会来月经。每个女孩子长大以后呢，都会来月经，这是一件非常正常的事情。所以她女儿从小就知道，哦，原来女生长大以后是会来月经的，并且当她女儿第一次月经初潮的时候呢，她就非常高兴的跟她妈说：“哎妈，我来月经了，你给我一瓶卫生巾。”她妈也恭喜她说：“啊，恭喜你拥有一个生小宝宝的能力了，说明你长大了。”那这并不是故事的重点，故事的重点是发生在有一次，他们班里面另外一个小女孩，也是呢第一次来月经，六年级，那结果当天还穿了一条白色的裤子，就是吓得完全不敢起来，也怕被同学看到。他女儿知道以后是怎么做的呢？他女儿首先解下了自己的校服外套，围在了那个女孩子的腰间。
并且呢，还去办公室找一个女老师借了一片卫生巾，再把这个女孩子带到卫生间里面教她换上，并且还一直安慰她说：“哎，你不要害怕，这是月经，这是一个非常正常的事情，说明你长大了，你拥有一个生小宝宝的能力了，这是一件值得庆祝的事情。”这件事情呢，当他把告诉他妈妈以后呢，他妈妈就觉得非常的骄傲。我觉得其实这就是为什么我们要给孩子进行性教育的理由，不仅仅说是孩子认识自己的身体，知道自己的身体在什么时候会有什么样的变化，他能够轻松的、自然的去看待这样的变化。同时，他也知道说，哎，当我的同伴出现这样的事情的时候，我可以如何去影响我的同伴，如何去照顾我的同伴。Welcome back to the studio.、Mm. So during the break, it was、um, success story because you know how sex education done in a proper way would generate all these positive results. Like you know the story with the girl, that was a very good example、right. of how important and how successful the、uh, sex ed- education is with that family.、Uh, so the next question is when shall we start? When? Do you、I'm, think it is the right time?、Mm, I don't know. When I was growing up in the West, I don't think I, you know, I I learned like through the the health issues when I was, you know, quite young, biology、yeah. classes, anatomy,、uh, physiology. But late, I didn't really know about sex till middle school or high school. Okay. So we aren't giving any of these reading materials when we're in elementary school. So when we say what age should we start, I mean I I don't know because I didn't I didn't I didn't start this young. You know? well, what age should we start? Yeah. I mean, what is the right age? When a baby is born, it's the time when you should start. But <laughs> how, how do you start? <laughs> <with> <laughs> <a> how? <laughs> you know how the parents or the caretaker take care of the kid is already a sexuality education. It's already like you're being gentle to them. You're you're talking to the、uh, the baby while you're changing diapers <coughs> or、uh, bathing him or her, and that's best time basically to start talking to the kid. And they would listen. They would get the information or. Don't underestimate the ability of a little baby to、uh, take in、uh, the information.、Yeah. It's not just the information; it's the attitude, it's the the level of care the,、uh. that the baby feels. You know, the baby the love, right? cannot Emotion, talk, but、yeah. you know, it, he doesn't think that complicatedly, but he could definitely feel. Right.、Um, also ties to like whether to give a doll to a girl or a car to a boy. Exactly. Right? So those the social aspect, the, 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 the gender、right. equality education、right. uh, came in. So you know? every little thing counts, right? Yeah. So、mm-hmm. it's for different age groups, different contents. Did Did you design this at all? I mean, you have a doctor husband, but I mean. But well, he's new com- as a dad as well, so yeah, he's yeah. he's learning as well. Yeah, but, but when it comes to sex education to your kids, and did you have a discussion? Say now, you're since you're three years old, and then go, we're going to teach you this. No, actually,、um, because we have a girl and a boy, so you know the difference between the gender. So something we we trying to to cover, and、uh, we actually trying to. Kind of、uh, make things neutral.、Um, mm. It was probably、Gender、just、neutral. just us, but we didn't f- want our daughter just feel like a cars for boy,、mm. or don't want the boy feel like the dolls just for the sister. We want them to feel、mm-hmm. whatever they want to do. That's fine. Yeah, the trying to, you know, buy things in neutral color, which would be yellow, <laughs> can't be blue. <laughs> yeah, things like that. We're trying to actually make them don't really feel too much of the difference. Do not want to define them.、Mm, the pink is too too girly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know, yeah. What's the boy's color? Blue usually. Well, blue, blue normally,、okay. but yeah, you can wear pink. Pink shirt look nice in men as well. So. Yeah. Mm. And because it's you know sister and brother, so they do have this sense of different gender. And、um, mm. uh, well, I d- I probably failed to use proper、mm-hmm. the proper addressing the body part. But when I was changing my boy's nappy, which、mm. is what you're saying, baby, remember? Because sometimes I would say, "Let me clean your little chicken," which is the, the Chinese way <laughs>、yes. calling、yes. yeah <laughs> the male part.、Mm. And one day the daddy was carrying him in public. And、uh, he shouted out, saying, "We are boys. We got a little chicken," <laughs> <laughs> which is、uh, yeah, quite embarrassing. But my daddy didn't know it was embarrassing because it was shouted out in Chinese,、mm-hmm. and he was like, "What he say?" Like, yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so I'll tell you later. So again, you would also come up with, you know, come to cases where you would like to, 
okay, leave it there for a bit, and then you save no, it for later. No, it's for the dad to save him to be embarrassed in public, mm -hmm. not for the children. E exactly. Yeah. So, w Stella, what do you think is the right age? Since you know your son mm -hmm. knows enough or more than enough already. <laughs> <laughs> the right age. I don't think there is a right age because kids are different. So the. From my point of view, I think it's, um, it should start at the age when he shows interest in this. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I can share just one uh, small story mm. uh, yeah, in my home. Because uh, when he goes to kindergarten, I, I kind of read stories about at kindergarten, the boys and girls, they go to different uh, toilets. So I don't want him to, you know, to feel surprised if he goes to kindergarten to find uh, you know, uh, two uh, toilets. So starting from very early age uh, in my home, we, we have two toilets. So I kind of uh, told him that, uh, okay, why is for... Gents. Yeah, yeah, gents and <laughs> ladies. Right. So I have yeah. the ladies and uh, he and his father, they use the gents' yeah. <laughs> toilets. Right. So he feels very natural. You know, boys and girls, they go to different uh, mm. toilets. Men and women are different. Yeah, yeah, no. There, there is the difference between You have women. sex education then at home. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether you, you should call it, but uh, in a way, yeah, it's yeah. not just uh, not that broad, not uh, that official. I looked at these contents. I mean, they're quite graphic and they're quite, I mean, straightforward. This is mm. for a second grade grader. Yeah, this is for third grade. So oh, yeah. for the fifth second grade. grade that's the fifth grade? We got first the grade. Thing. That's similar. The same thing. Ah. Same body parts, things. right? Yeah. All the, well, wow. very graphic and wow. all these pictures. This is for age showing six? the differences no, this is of men and women. Age six. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. These are quite. <laughs> and here is another yeah. one. This is for three to six. Three to eight, I think. Yeah. Here is another one. Oh. Yeah. And more. Right. Uh -huh. um, I guess this is it's natural for some parents, maybe not you, <laughs> but for some parents to get worried. Hey, you're letting kids know too much, mm. too early. I definitely think it's not too early. And um, for now changing to my role as a professional worker in this area, we do follow uh, some guidelines which are based on evidence. Yeah. So um, like this one, uh, the International uh, Technical Guidance on Sexuality Education, this was a revised edition uh, which was just released um, a year ago uh, by uh, you know, a few uh, UN agencies, including uh, the organization that I work. Um, basically, it recommends a framework, a contents framework, and um, it gives out the um, uh, age-appropriate contents for four different uh, age groups. What's the difference so in terms of the contents? The contents, uh, it uh, basically has to be built on the developmental level, the uh, cognitive ability um, mm. and the social exper experience of a child at different age levels. Mm. For example, pregnancy. Five to eight, you don't need to know uh, the signs of pregnancy. Pe the children might notice your, your tummy gets bigger and bigger. Oh. You know, those are mm. very visual uh, signs, yeah. But then for 9 to 12-year-old uh, children, we need to let them know uh, the, you know, the, the signs of pregnancy uh, because at that's the stage when girls start to have menstruation. Oh. So what is the menstrual cycle and what will happen if you are pregnant? If someone gets pregnant, then that's change your menstrual cycle mm. and you need to be aware of those signs. Mm. And then, and, and, and more than that, you need to also know once you get these signs, you need to confirm it, you need to have the skill and the courage to seek help from a trusted adult. Is that universal? I mean, from country to country, different uh, cultural backgrounds? Um, it's recommended as a, as a technical uh, guidance and it's not mandatory, it's a voluntary, it's a technical guidance. It's offered mm. um, as, a, you know, as a guide for countries to develop curriculum that are appropriate for their own context. Mm -hmm. I just wonder because, yeah. yeah. I mean, regionally, culturally speaking, there could mm. be some differences mm -hmm. in China, yeah. in Asia, mm -hmm. in America, in, I don't know, Middle East, well, in Africa. Things could be all different. Yeah, I mean, I think mm. in America, half of the states in America mm. mandate sex yeah. education, only half. So you're talking about the other half. Mm -hmm. 
they're not they don't they're not required to provide sex education. Mm. Yeah. So how about here in China? What's the situation like? And this is not mandatory, right? No. This is the kind of a this is a reading material. Reading that material. The school can choose to use. So in regular public schools, do they get or do they just get biology class or? So what about your son? Does he get anything like that at, yeah, from school? school? Yeah. He has the regular, you know, biology and health uh, mm. lessons in school, but I don't think they give um, additional uh, materials to yeah. the kids. Mm. Uh, I did look at the biology textbook mm -hmm. uh, of a junior middle school. Mm -hmm. They do have two lessons. Mm. Uh, so one is about reproduction, and, mm -hmm. and the one is about puberty. So they talk about puberty changes. Right. Um, so there are certain contents, yeah, included in the current curriculum. Uh, in terms of relationship aspect, I think most schools will have this uh, morality education. But if you're talking about comprehensiveness uh, of the yeah. current education, I would say it's not as far from being uh, uh, comprehensive. Of course, um, the national outline for child development uh, promulgated by the state council. That's, it says very clearly that uh, sexual and reproductive health education should be part of compulsory okay. education. Mm -hmm. But in reality, uh, many schools or most of the schools um, are unable or, mm -hmm. or unwilling uh, to put that um, uh, into practice. Uh, unable, out of different reasons. Out of different reasons. And capacity is one thing. Uh, you know, uh, awareness is one thing, you know, the, the attitudes mm -hmm. towards this subject, that's one uh, key thing, but also capacity is another issue. Uh, some of the schools that we, uh, we talk to, they think that it's necessary to provide this kind of education, but they lack the capacity. They do mm -hmm. not have teachers mm -hmm. who are properly trained mm -hmm. uh, to do that. Then they do not know how, and they dare not do it because they are scared of, you know, side effects and negative consequences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've, I've been just um, going through all these um, reading material books, and it's very comprehensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for different age groups, it's not just about the uh, the body differences or reproduction part. It's very comprehensive. I mean, yeah, it's all about like social skills, about exactly. how you actually your friends. Yeah. Okay, let's take another break, and we'll continue our discussion after this. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll be testing out a sex education game that's created by a group of students, and Hong Yun is next to me. We're going to do this little experiment together. Yeah. Okay, you're an expert in this field, so <laughs> shall we start? Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, this game is called self-reliance. So mm -hmm. basically, you make choices, and it's going to alter right, the outcome of the situation. Mm -hmm. So they're acting out like a scenario. She's trying to make her stay. So there's a decision okay. to make, right? Okay. Two so choices, two right? choices. Go home no matter what, or stay over for a night. I think we should choose something that's out of the box, so we'll <laughs> stay over for <laughs> a night, right? We'll see where it goes. What do you think it means for the students who are making the game? You know, my first reaction to this game is that um, for them, they might face a um, situation that they don't have access to uh, this uh, essential information mm -hmm. in a way that can relate to them. So and the very name of the game, self-reliance, mm -hmm. so they, they resort to making one, creating one on their own. Mm -hmm. I would feel that for them is also, a, as I said, is an education process. Right. And by making this product, they can also help other students to learn something. Very, mm -hmm. very simple, you know, yeah. very basic I mean, kind of I mean, like you said, fact. it's kind of implicating that they also need this information, exactly. right? Because mm -hmm. it's yeah. called self-reliance, so mm -hmm. they, they can depend on textbooks. Maybe they're depending on themselves mm -hmm. to do research about sex education. Mm -hmm. That's Therefore, the name of the game is called self-reliance. Yeah. Yeah. We came to the end of the game, yeah. and we are being called losers because we've been making <laughs> right. the wrong decisions. On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that it's actually helpful for students? Obviously, you know, I would think young people would be curious to mm -hmm. find out what the game is about, especially if it's created by someone uh, of their peer. Um, so no matter how, if they play it, they would get something, I would say. Yeah, I agree, right? <laughs> so it's positive in that sense, yeah. Right. At least we know that when they're making this game, they're also doing research on their own because mm. they need to provide the knowledge, sex exactly. education knowledge to other peers. Yeah. So I guess that's a positive thing. I'm just curious whether they will have more of this because this says episode one mm -hmm. so with you know, uh, netizens being really involved in this mm -hmm. game. I mean, we can expect more games like this to, to come about. The game is made in a quite in entertaining way. You know, some people might find it's funny yeah. <laughs> and it's different from the, rea uh, the real life. But I would say that sometimes entertainment 
and entertaining and educational is not contradictory. Right, you can have both. Right? Exactly, yeah. So you can buy uh, putting yourself in a light-hearted way and then you can break that taboo and then you can talk about it. Yeah. And I think also because of the social media era for, mm -hmm. young, for young people, entertainment is mm -hmm. quite important. Being entertaining itself is quite important. Yeah. So I think this is it's it. good. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
you know, her, her work backwards mm -hmm. rather than we are what she was trying to do, putting, you know, things forward. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you're saying not only kids who need sex education, the whole society but also need a proper, adults and yeah, parents. I think it's about the attitude, um, you know, like, mm -hmm. I think generally because we're conservative, Chinese conservative about this, and uh, in developed uh, to the ex extreme, we have some kind of shameful, uh, like we feel ashamed to talk about you know, things related mm. about sex. And we do, don't find it's a common kind of a conversation. You know, we never talk to your parents about your sex life ever. <laughs> Which <you> mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, well, I think that's true. But even in Western countries, where you, you probably find it's yeah. awkward. But you wouldn't find, feel ashamed, but you feel it's awkward. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's too different. And and also, I also think the media is also, you know, takes a big influence exactly. on it because, in, you know, TV series in the States or movies, you see a lot of sexual content in it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just the part of life and part of a relationship. It's a bit of a cultural difference. It's also mm -hmm. a bit of something that people don't feel at ease talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is one concern, though, shared by some parents, say, especially maybe the parents of the girls, mm -hmm. say, you're giving, you know, our girls too much information and kind of uh, encourage them to try things out. <laughs> That's a very classical uh, myth about sex ed. We need the evidence to respond to these kind of concerns. Um, so uh, basically UNESCO commissioned two major global reviews of evidences. One is in 2007 and the other is in 2016. So these two major reviews tells us uh, across the world uh, all the um, research and studies and experimental uh, programs that have been done on sexuality education um, you know the the summary from these two media reviews it shows that by providing sex ed you will not encourage the children to have early sex mm -hmm. basically you will decrease you will delay the initiation of the first uh, sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also you will reduce, you'll be able to reduce the frequencies of sexual behavior and also uh, reduce the number of sexual partners. Basically that reduce the uh, sexual risks and also it will increase um, the adoption of uh, condom use and contraception mm -hmm. uh, uh, practice. Yeah. So basically it has positive effects. Um, on the other hand, the abstinence approach, the abstinence means you do not talk about sex at all. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's, that is um, a major, you know. So actually that has a negative effect. Exactly. So, yeah. so there's, there has been no evidence to show that abstinence education will help to delay sex or mm -hmm. decrease the uh, uh, frequency uh, of sex, uh, sexual behavior. It's all well said, yeah. but at the same time, we have come back, come down mm. to the fact as a parent, Stella. Mm. After this episode, is it getting more likely that you would have a uh, you know, related uh, conversation with your son, or you would just go back to the same path and say, go talk to your dad? <laughs> For me, probably still... Uh, Go I talk to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy way out, though. Well, he is hitting the puberty stage, so... The right? reading material. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. reading material. He has the knowledge. It's just that maybe if uh, there is an interpersonal uh, mm. conversation, maybe his dad would be more appropriate. You know, you, you, you don't want to discuss these topics with uh, your mother, right? Mm. As a boy. It's, um, it's a it's man to man, guy, man, man Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I'm <laughs> saying is, at least uh, according to my observation, it's everyone understands, academically speaking, this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But socially speaking, culturally speaking, uh, we're still not there yet. Probably people like yourself are now working toward that direction. But for the majority of the parents, there's still a long way to go and a lot of work to be done. Yeah, but I do think like China has gone a long way from mm -hmm. a very conservative, you know, culturally speaking, we're quite conservative, mm. but to have these reading materials actually available for some people, yeah. mm. I think it's, I mean, if you compare it to what we have in the States, we actually don't even have this. Mm. So I could say it's quite ahead of the game, mm. if you ask me. You know yeah. what? Because I, I, I never had proper sexuality <laughs> education when I was little. <laughs> so let's uh, put an end to this discussion, this episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start reading all these thousands <laughs> of us myself. Okay. Once again, thank you, ladies, and for coming to this, um, this episode, coming to Crossover. And thank you for 
your education. And thank you for watching this episode of Crossover. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.